I wish I had your faith. If it was me, I would have taken the antidote straight away. I don't need it. As you can see, I'm recovering. Yeah, but what about tomorrow and the day after that? At least with the antidote, you've got security, a guarantee. Perhaps. Perhaps not. Well, then what about the rest of us? We need to know if the antidote works or not. And Brady, doesn't she deserve a chance? It's against my principles, Trudy. Yeah. Well, they may kill you, Tai San. So welcome to episode 44 of Conversation on Eagle Mountain, a podcast about the tribe. I'm your host, Lance, and joining me on our podcast panel today is Liz. Hello. Sabine. Hi. And Maggie. Hi. With episode notes done by Matt and myself. So episode 44, the screenplay was done by James Wiley. It was directed by Julian McSweeney, and the episode synopsis will be read out by Sabine. KC is gambling away with tribe members' personal items, including the pig. Can Chloe help win it all back? Meanwhile, Lex is feeling the effects of the virus, and, having seen Ty Sam's recovery, decides to try her method instead of taking the antidote. However, Ty Sam's method requires Lex to be free of a heavy conscience leading him to a series of confessions to each member of the Morats. Okay, so episode 44. With fear of the virus still gripping the wall, Ty Sen appears to have made a miraculous recovery, while Lex feels worse and summons Ryan so that the two can make peace should the end be nigh. It seems that his experience at Hope Island makes him suspicious of the antidote, and it's clear that the place unnerved him despite his bravery at the time. Um, quite a few questions, panel, but let's focus on that bit first, was were any of you surprised uh, how much Hope Island had affected Lex? Not really. I mean, not like personally, oh, I can't believe Lex responded that way to Hope Island. I mean, it was a creepy place. Mm -hmm. yeah, well. and it's not like the prototype was properly labeled. You know, if it had been something safe to give to the public, shouldn't have already been out in the public. So his suspicions of that stuff makes perfect sense to me. And, um, I mean, there was a landmine there. It's a creepy place that they barely escaped. I, I wouldn't be eager to drink anything we found there either. Oh, you mean, would you drink something from a mad scientist lab? Probably not. Well, it's not like it was labeled, you know? It's right. not like it said, hey, this is towards this virus and we're trying to come up with something. They have no idea what they brought back. It could have been a scientist's urine for all they know. Hmm. Yeah, looking at the color, yeah. Yeah. I mean, sometimes the cure is way scarier, especially if you don't know if it's secure. So I don't, I don't, I don't blame them. Yeah, I, I don't think I'd be the first person to offer to try it either. You know, it's just, you don't know what's in there. I mean, he came into the mall saying, hey, we found the antidote. But he's one of the few people who knows for a fact they don't know if it's the antidote. Mm -hmm. They just found some test tubes with fluid in there they didn't even have stoppers on them like <laughs> it's just, like this could be anything we just took it because there was nothing else there i don't know what this is you know it wasn't just you don't know clearly remember they lived the virus and there was no antidote distributed there was no cure there was nothing and so if this was supposed to be the cure i'd be thinking wouldn't it have been mass produced you'd think yeah you know if it worked well at the very least the people Making it would have tried it on themselves, you know, if they really thought they finished making a solution to the antidote. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And, there's... and if that was the case, they would have been alive. Yup. Yep. Absolutely. But this is Lex, on the other hand. He I, he doesn't think that deeply. <laughs> so like, I know. But when it comes to his own survival, he does. Yeah. Yeah. He'd, he'd be fine with someone else trying it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if it had been Brave, he would have been pushing and pushing to make sure Brave tried it, you know, for the good of the tribe. Absolutely. He would have been on a podium telling everybody, like, Brave's being selfish, that he won't do this. Yeah, he would have done everything but force it down his throat. Exactly. And that, I wouldn't be surprised if he did that. I was going to say, I wouldn't put that past him. Yep, I wouldn't put it past him either. Not when it comes to Bray. He basically threatens to force Tysan to take it. Exactly. They don't even know right. if she has 
it's a virus. She doesn't. You know, and he's willing to force this down her throat when they don't know what it is. But if it's his own life on the line, of course he's not taking it. But that, that leads to the next thing as well, because like, okay, you, you can go from, okay, we need to find out what's in this to, okay, spiritual cleansing is the way to go. Did, did no one find that jarring at all? I just thought it was really crazy how very suddenly he was just like, well, this is the route we're taking, you know, when he used to call her a space cadet and all sorts of other things. Like, mm-hmm. I just, it, it's crazy. And how did they know she even had the virus, you know? I don't know. It's just silly. It's a little hard for me to to determine whether or not I found it jarring because I'm at this point, I've studied Lex for so many decades that I'm now used to these swings and his personality. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to remember if at the time I was thrown off by it and I can't, I can't remember if I thought it was weird, Mm -hmm. but when I focus on Lex's self-preservation and what he is willing to do for his own safety, it's not surprising. He has proven there are things he's willing to do if he's going to gain from it. And he is willing to do good things if he gains from it. And he's willing to do bad things. So um, he's already expressed how desperate and scared he is right now. Why wouldn't he jump on this if he thinks it would save him? Mm-hmm. And we already know he did prove that he has some respect for Tyson. He may not get her. He may not understand her. But he does think kind of highly of her. Yeah. It's a way it will slightly impress her for him to do this, and he will do it. And, you know, it's he's still in the early stages of the virus, if that's what he has. So he knows that this is a safe option to try, especially since it seemed to help with Tyson, as far as he knows. Hey, let's, let's get into that, because <laughs> Tyson obviously did not have the virus. Obviously. I but mean... she plays it up as if she had it and cleansed herself like of course she did of course she did <sighs> yeah but i mean we have people like that in this day and age as well who will say i'll oh, just eat these berries i was talking about that i'm like this is like the essential oil people you know yeah like essential oils will cure everything i believe they help for some things but is they going to get rid of the virus no is meditation yeah. going to get rid of the virus no, come on. I will say this in Tyson's defense. I do not feel like Tyson ever advertises that she had the virus. No, she, she did herself of the virus. No. Um, Tyson got sick. She didn't know what she had. Right. She didn't know why she was sick, but she did get sick and she got herself better. Mm-hmm. I will say this for Tyson. Whatever she believes, she does believe it genuinely and she's not pulling anyone's leg or trying to manipulate anybody. Mm -hmm. All she knows is I wasn't feeling well and everybody just assumed I must have the virus and I'm going to die. And I healed myself, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she doesn't tell anybody, hey, I had the virus. It's just kind of, you know, the lies of omission and all that. I don't even think it's that. It's just kind of like let people believe what they want to believe. I was ill and I healed myself. That is her truth. And the, considering how she does treat the virus and that she doesn't believe medicinal intervention would have solved it anyway, it's almost like she kind of treats all illnesses the same. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, I believe that, yeah. So she's like, whatever it was, I cured it with my beliefs. And so you can cure anything that way. Not saying I agree with her, just in her defense, she didn't tell anybody, I had the virus and I fixed it. <laughs> but she also didn't tell anybody, I don't think I had the virus. When she knew damn well, she didn't have the virus. Maybe she did think she had the virus. Maybe she didn't. She was just trying not to be scared. But the way that she reacted to Glenn's appearance and showing up to the show showed me that she was scared of the virus. It was. And then she had to just knuckle down and deal with it. And then she, it worked in her favor, which only, you know, it's like the confirmation bias. Mm-hmm. You okay. know, if she really wanted to believe that the virus can only be cured by natural spiritual methods and she got sick and then she mm-hmm. got better, that just confirms what she already wants to believe about it. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. So she may have walked away thinking, oh my gosh, I got the virus and I cured myself. Just like I always believed we should have been able to do. Yeah. Yes. And this was was what went wrong with humanity. They went for medicine. She definitely believed science was the reason that humanity was destroyed. Yeah. I believe she said that. 
instead of cleansing their souls and becoming better people and becoming one with nature, they looked for science to solve their problems and it did not save them. Right. But yeah, still don't think she had the virus. No, I mean, I don't believe she did, but what, what, what Liz said makes total sense. Mm -hmm. I do think it's clever storytelling because they never, they never confirm for us. Yeah. When you break it down the way that you do, I can see it. They tell the story in the same way that we, ex so we can experience it like the other characters. We don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, we don't believe she had it, but think about it. We don't know for sure. It never confirms for us whether she had it. So it helps us relate to the other characters who watched it happen and they don't have a clear answer. Yeah. Which explains a lot of their actions because they don't know for sure. Did you? Did anyone find it interesting who did or didn't believe that she had the virus? Um, for example, like um, Amber and Bray obviously believed that she just had the bug, um, as did Tr Trudy. But obviously, like Ryan, the others believe that she had. She could have had the virus. No, I don't think it was weird. It seems pretty un on brand for the characters. Yeah, who, that's what I was going to say. It seems very better at critical weird. thinking. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, it would be great if she had the virus and she cured herself, but they're looking at the evidence and it's like her symptoms are... They look at things a little more realistically. Yeah. Or they could be being pessimistic. That too. That too. I don't know. From Trudy's point of view, I would have at first expected her to really, really panic that Tyson might be ill. And yeah, for... I get why she later shrugged it off at a ah it wasn't it wasn't a virus it can't have been but I fully get why she first thought it was. Well, I mean, as far as we know, the virus starts like any flu or cold, right? Mm -hmm. But then when Tyson didn't show any other um, yeah. symptoms of the virus, you had many people who were like, I guess it's not the virus, especially the fact that she got better. And you remember, these are people who lived through the virus mm -hmm. and watched it kill every person it got. And at yeah. that point, you're just like. It couldn't have been the virus. There's just no way she could have survived through natural healing because we watched an entire world of adults trying every method possible to save themselves. And I guarantee there were a lot of adult Tysans out there. Yeah. Who used spiritual healing and stones and sprinkles and fairy dust and it still killed them. So yeah, I, I can understand being like, at first, maybe it is the virus. And then being like, no, nah, I don't think it was the virus. I'm great. I'm happy she's alive, but I don't think she had the virus. Right. <laughs> I do think she was selfish not to try. And I can't help myself with that. You have that moment where Trudy asks her to please, please just take the antidote. Oh, I like that because Trudy is being very pragmatic. She's like, this, Trudy gets it. Like, look, whether or not we believe or know, we won't know unless... What matters is whether or not that stuff we brought back on the island works. Mm. And unless someone who is sick takes it, yeah. we don't have any answer. Yeah. So I, I get it from Trudy's point of view. I get why Tyson didn't want to. But, uh, if I would have been Trudy, I would have tried to wring her neck, just refusing to take it for, you know, helping others. Nah, I wouldn't. I don't feel that way at all. I don't feel like anyone has that responsibility to me or anybody else. Um, I don't think that's fair. To I'm very appreciative anymore. of those that do. Yeah, you know, like, thank you. But it is not their obligation to right. put themselves in danger um, just to prove to the rest of the world everything's great. And you remember, Tyson just had like a fever, some chills, and mm -hmm. sniffles. And you're right. telling me she should take something that could be potentially poison just so that we know it's safe? That's BS. She does not owe us that at all. <laughs> um, so I understand why Tyson and why. Trudy was upset, but no, she's not going to force it on anybody or be angry that, you know, how dare you not do this, you know, because I, I don't think anybody should be a test subject for everybody else. I appreciate it if you're willing to do it, but no, you don't owe me that. Yeah, I, I just think she kind of expected Tyson to be willing to do that because he does other things for the good of the tribe. That is interesting right there. If Tyson's whole bag is what's good for everybody, why not be the guinea pig for this stuff? Mm -hmm. Because she wants everybody to, to do things her way. It does bring her whole belief system into question. <laughs> mm -hmm. But then again, if she truly doesn't believe this is good for everybody, then her not taking it makes more sense. The thing is, you're my best friend. I've known you as long as I can remember. <laughs> you're the only family I've had. Lex, it's okay. I haven't finished. 
I'd hate to go thinking there was bad blood between us. Is there, man? I have to know. Um, let's leave Tyson for a second and go back to Lex. Um, what did you think of him making amends with Ryan before he even begins his spiritual journey? Yeah, did it like touch you at all that he, he counted Ryan as like his closest family? All right, I'm just going to admit, I'm totally biased here. And I already have an issue with deathbed confessions, people making peace because one or another person is dying. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Okay, if the only reason you're willing to make things right with someone is because your life is ending or their life is ending, I don't care. It doesn't yeah. mean anything to me. So it may seem like, oh, Lex is trying to make peace with Ryan, but it's only because he thinks he's dying. If he right. wasn't willing to do it while he was alive, it doesn't mean anything to me. So I'm biased against that sort of thing. I don't buy into the whole deathbed confession. I don't care. <laughs> to me, I'm just like, oh, you're trying to get to heaven. I don't care. <laughs> I 100% agree with you. You know, if being on a good ground with me when you still have your whole life ahead of you wasn't important, then why should I care now? Yep. And I feel, I feel like it was very entirely unfair to Ryan. Yes. When people do that, they're just trying to absolve themselves. And he knew that. That's the, you can see it in Ryan's face that he knows the only reason Lex is doing this yeah. is because he's sick. And Ryan's such a sweet guy. He gives I know. It's like someone asking you forgiveness for the terrible things they've done because you're dying or they're dying. And it's yeah, just like, he did it to make Lex feel better, not to make exactly, himself feel better. Exactly. And so I just, I'm not moved by it because I think, me neither. yes, I'm just like, whatevs. <laughs> it's kind of like, if you want to bring me flowers, bring them to me when I'm still alive, not when I'm dead and can't appreciate them. Don't yeah. want them. <laughs> no, that's very true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it does nothing for me. You know, um, if he was doing it for some other reason, it'd be different. But he's only doing this because he thinks he's dying and because he thinks this will, you know, maybe help him. Like, and yeah, help so, him cure him. Like, so it's selfish. Yeah, I just you know? don't care. It's a very selfish apology, very selfish, whatever it was. And Ryan was being selfless in this moment. Right. By like, I think accepting the apology, forgiving him because he wanted Lex to be comfortable. Yes. Like, I'm cool with Ryan's side of mm -hmm. being like, I'm going to give this to you because yep. I'm a good person. Not because you deserve it, but because here you go. I, it's because right. who I am. Yep. But yeah, I just don't care. When you, as a villain who is willing to do terrible things to other people, and they just don't care who they hurt when they do these things, and then you think by putting them through some hardship, I'm going to suddenly feel sorry for them. I, I don't care. I don't care about Cersei's walk of shame. She totally no. deserved it. Don't Absolutely. care. Not crying for her. I know Lex had horrible things happen to him, and I'm sorry they happened to him, but it doesn't justify what he's done to other people. Right. And I'm not going to suddenly forgive his actions because bad things are happening to him now. Don't care. Bad things happen to everyone, but everyone doesn't choose to act the way that Lex does. Exactly. It's not an excuse. Nope. Yeah, I sound like a frigid biatch. Right now. No, I'm just, I'm glad you said something, that you said it and I didn't. But I'm just, I'm not moved by it. Because me neither. I was like, I don't really, I didn't really care for the scene. I looked up and I'm like, oh, this is what's happening. Okay. <laughs> Him doing that, it's like, like people hating someone all their lives and then suddenly showing up at a funeral all sad and crying. Right. Yeah. It's just to make themselves look better. Mm -hmm. it's to make themselves feel better yeah exactly that's it like when lex laid back and i i basically just rolled my eyes i was like really yeah you can see he feels relieved mm -hmm. that ryan forgave him like thank you i'm at peace it was never about ryan's feelings never i do like that about this episode though with Lex running around, apologizing to people, trying to make peace. I like the fact that there are people who didn't always accept his forgiveness. I mean, his right. apology. They're just like, you know what? It doesn't mean anything to me. You're only doing it to save your own life. And um, if you really want to make peace with me, do this. And he's not willing to. So he never wanted to make peace to begin with. Whatevs. I don't care. Same. Continue your spiritual journey. <laughs> I don't <laughs> care. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> But no, I'm not going to give you peace with my forgiveness. Mine is not an easy cure. It takes courage, determination, and strength of character. I'm ready. 
What you need is a total purification of mind, body and spirit. A karmic cleansing. How? Your search cannot begin without absolute truth in your dealings with others. You must rid yourself of all lies, all deception. That's pretty heavy stuff. You can do it. Face up to those you've hurt and make your peace. Only then can the healing begin. So speaking of the spiritual cleansing, so Tyson explains to Lex that her alternative cure is not easy. Um, yeah, panel, like... Oh. Why doesn't she use her own medicine? And what do you think her own comic cleansing would have involved? She should have apologized to Zandra <laughs> for one. Gosh. Wow. Keep in mind, she doesn't believe she did anything wrong. I know, but Zandra was still hurt in the process. I'm still very surprised that Tyson did not offer to have sex with Lex to realign his chakras to make this healing process easier. I'm kind of on the fence. Well, I'm not really on the fence. I just, I have a defense for her. And at the same time, I'm just kind of like, whatevs. Because she reminds me of one of those goop people. You know, I just, okay, Gwyneth, like, you don't live in our world. And um, I'm just going to let you do you. <laughs> mm -hmm. In defense of Tysan, I do believe wholeheartedly that this is what Tysan believes. She believes in this karmic thing. She's not leading Lex astray. She's not lying to him. She's not trying to manipulate him. She truly wants to help him. And in her eyes, this is how it's done. Like she believes she has a pure spirit. Tysan truly believes that her motives and objectives are always pure. You know, she didn't want to hurt Zandra. So in her eyes, she didn't do anything wrong to Zandra. And um, she, in her eyes, she made peace with Zandra by saying, look, I wasn't trying to take her husband. I wish you all the happiness in the world. Not saying I agree with her, but I will say that Tysan comes across as entirely sincere. This is what she believes. She's truly trying to help Lex, even if it sounds kind of ridiculous, you know? Um, and I mean, ah, it's. I'm not saying it's right, not saying I agree. But I will say it's the one of the few times Tyson does come across to me as sincere and genuine. If she already believes her soul is clean, which she does, you know, she does not feel she's ever done anything to harm anybody on purpose. Her intentions were always good in her eyes. And that meant her actions were okay. <laughs> not saying they were, but she believes that. <laughs> you know? She's like, Lex, your soul is dirty. You have deliberately gone out of your way to hurt people. You need to fix that first, you know? And I think she sincerely does want to help him, but she tells him straight up, it's not going to be easy, man. <laughs> it's the opposite of who you are. <laughs> I kind of think that's why Lex trusted her, you know? Because even if he doesn't get Tyson. She has always been honest with him and forthright and he may not get her, but he does respect her, you know? And so if she's telling him, you got to be this, you got to do this. He's like, maybe that's why she beat it because she's a better person than me, you know? Yeah, he's looking for that glimmer of hope to hold on to. He knows he's a garbage person. <laughs> oh yeah, he knows. He knows, but... You know, if she can cure herself, maybe there's a chance for him. That's what he's holding on to. I don't think Tyson sees her behavior as erratic or inconsistent. And that could also be just a writer's problem. You know, they set her up as one person. And then when conflicts have come up where Tyson certainly would have stood up and said something, the writers just chose not to have her do that. Mm -hmm. So I think they take the blame for that, you know. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, she doesn't have it all together either, I guess. It's the only way you can say. Nope. She doesn't have to go on some spiritual quest when she thinks she has the virus because she doesn't feel she's done anyone any wrong. So she doesn't have to walk around the tribe saying, hey, sorry for this. Granted, yeah, maybe she should have apologized to Zandra for sleeping with her boyfriend. Again, Tyson doesn't believe she did anything wrong because she doesn't do that. That's why she doesn't use her own medicine because she doesn't think it's necessary. Whereas Lex, it's so obviously necessary. He's done a lot of people wrong. Turd. And she's telling him, you got to make that right. But he doesn't believe he's done anything wrong. So. 
Oh, see, the thing is, he does. That's the that's he the difference. Knows. Lex knows. That's why he doesn't balk at what she says. He's like, "Oh, you're right. I know." And he has no problem confessing all his wrongs because yes. he's very he's aware, aware of them. them. He knew. He never struggles with a single person. He he never sits there and goes, "Oh, I you know I know I've messed with you, but I'm not really sure how." No, he knows for a fact what he's done to everybody. He's a lot smarter than people think. And he doesn't hurt them by accident. He knew exactly how he'd wronged everybody. They are calculated risks. Yes, that's why she says it takes courage determination and strength of character to do this to face these people and tell them what you've done and be sorry that you did it i don't know if he's sorry but he's aware (laughs) because you'll notice it's not like you have to sit down and brainstorm how he's hurt people he instantly knows because he knows (laughs) he knows how he screwed up all his wrongs are on speed dial they are but that says something too because there are a lot of people who do terrible things and they don't, they're unaware of it in the way, like, for example, Tysan does not see how that she owes Zandra an apology because she doesn't see her actions as terrible. But it does say something that Lex is very aware of all of his terrible actions. He didn't need to take any time to think about it. No one had to convince him that his actions were bad. He knows and he never forgets. Mm-hmm. That does say something interesting about him. Because they say that's like the first struggle, like admitting you're in the wrong. Lex already knows. He knows. (laughs) Celine, I'm worried about Chloe and KC. They've been gone all night. I know, but they'll be all right. They're smart kids. What do you think they've been doing? Well, if Casey's in charge, I'm sure nothing good. Do you trust him? Let's just say I'm glad he's on our side. Let's step away from the mall for a little bit um, and head over to the gambling den um, where we encounter that Casey's initial winning streak turns sour, forcing Chloe to tie her hand at the roulette table where she eventually wins enough back to reclaim Porky. The staff, however, are not keen to give the pig up and Casey has to cause a distraction in order to enable Chloe to escape. Yeah, Panna, what did you think about Casey's principles here? Um, And yeah, what did you make of everyone's reaction to Casey's continued disappearance? They were quite blasé about it, weren't they? Been kind of inconsistent about the disappearance of certain characters for a while. Yeah. Depending on what they're going through, they'll either make it all all about the missing person or it's kind of like, oh, they'll be fine. Yeah, like with Chloe this time. They'll be fine. She's with Casey, so it's whatever. But Casey always gets, he's a little troublemaker, you know, and they know that. He's a rat, and rats always get away. I really did love Casey and Chloe's foray. It reminded me of the sibling relationship and how Mm -hmm. dynamic it is. You know, Casey is being kind of a pain. You know, like, he's willing to just keep betting, keep gambling, you know, even when it's like, dude, let's just stop while we're ahead, take this money, try and get our stuff back. And he's ignoring Chloe. Their relationship feels very like a brother and sister, very mm-hmm. natural. Even the fact that someone comments on that, like, am I, gam- am I betting you or your little sister? But I also love the fact that, you know, when Chloe wins, when she- <laughs> Casey finally admits, okay, I had my turn to prove, I screwed up. The first thing he thinks to do is sacrifice himself for his sister yeah. to get her out of there. I feel it's like, so true to sibling relationships where we have our issues with each other, And yet, when push comes to shove, if you have a good one, your sibling will lay down their life for you, you know, Mm -hmm. no matter how much you bicker and get on each other's nerves or don't even like each other on a day-to-day basis. Um, You don't have to like them when it comes to their lives, you know. I I really like that about the Chloe and Casey scenes. And for Chloe, everything's forgiven. You know, she doesn't hold it against Casey that he clearly has a gambling addiction. He does. <laughs> but I also like Casey's reaction to somebody bullying his sister. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Loved He's like, it. you guys aren't being fair. You're not playing fair. No. Nope. And this isn't going to work, right? Chloe, get With him. It was one, one thing. They screwed yes. him, but then they screwed Chloe, and that's not happening. And that was his initial reaction. He didn't think anything of it. He did it without hesitation. These guys aren't going to play fair. They're going to screw my sister over. It's my fault she's here. She stayed by me this whole time. She didn't tell anybody that I was doing this. 
I'm going to do whatever it takes so she and her pig can get away. Yeah. I find it adorable at that point. You know? <laughs> it's kind of adorable. It was. And just that look on Chloe's face when she comes home with the pig. Yes. She's worried about him. Oh, bless your heart, Chloe. Damn it, you're yeah. so cute. She's like, I'm so worried about him. He took you to a gambling den <laughs> and tried to gamble away your pig. Uh, and she's just like, he didn't make it back. I'm worried. And everyone's like, sweetheart. <laughs> Chloe, you're too good for this world. Too good. But he seems to care that Casey isn't back, hasn't made it back out of a gambling den. <laughs> Yeah. I don't blame them. I really don't. I'm. They don't know Tribe Circus. Right? They have a lot on their plate. This is also Casey who legit just mm -hmm. told everybody, hey, remember the stupid circus trial we all had to waste two days of our lives on? I'm the blame for it. Yep. And everyone's just like, whatever, kid. Oh, my gosh. Make yourself scarce. Just make yourself scarce. Why did it take us so long to get it together? There's a lot in the way with Trudy and Brady. I mean, it was pretty bad timing. Maybe we were both a little afraid of our feelings. I mean, I know I was. Really? I wanted you from the first moment. Did you feel the same way? Maybe. Oh, okay, okay. I couldn't keep my eyes off you. You're right, it was scary. I didn't want to be vulnerable. I couldn't afford to be, not with the way things were. Well, the main thing is that we're together now. And it feels so natural, like it. It's always been this way, and it always will be. I know what everyone's gonna say, but... Do you? Do you? <laughs> Do you, though? <laughs> what did everyone think of Amber and Bray's loving? I love it. Thanks. <laughs> you guys be happy. You sit up there with the rooftop and the wind turbine. That uh -huh. is ambience, baby. Yes. Get it. They're so freaking adorable. It's I disgusting. know. And I love the little conversation they have and all their little tiny confessions, you know. I know. Adorable. And I'm like, there it is. <laughs> Bray's saying everything right now. Oh, I love it when he's just like, eh. I don't know, you I she punched yeah. him. Oh, they're so freaking adorbs. <laughs> it's the best. I'm like, you guys deserve that happiness. Yes, and we needed this little bit of, of fluff this episode. Like, I won't like Bramber in later seasons, but mm -hmm. right now, you guys go for it. I'm happy for you. For sure. They're so adorable. They get to be happy this episode. Oh, you are so magnanimous. Let me have this. No, you guys gotta admit that chemistry between the actors is flawless. It is. It's amazing. It is. They're so freaking adorable. I'm like, I don't have a problem with it. They're so cute. My only problem with the scene is the framing of the shot. What's with the wind turbine on a cement roof? Yeah, we didn't need to see. They didn't need to pan out to that for sure. It just what. I mean, granted, I kind of get the whole vibe is like love in the midst of decay and whatever, but... I mean, I'm like, cool, it still works. Stay in the tight shot, you know? But they're, ador they're adorable. They're very cute. I'm very happy for them. And, you know, the way Amber's face is just so lit up and they're just... I'm fine with it. They can have it. Yep, I'm good. Because right now, it's like their relationship is on good foundation. These guys worked their asses off to get here. Yes. And they deserve it. I, later, I will have problems with it. But right now, none. None. They can have it. None. Mwah. <laughs> <laughs> I also like it because, like, exclude everything that comes later and just focus on this. You can't deny that this feels very organic. The journey to get these two here and listening to them admit the things they've been feeling all this time and the reasons they were afraid to admit no one wanting to be vulnerable. Exactly. Nobody wanting to be hurt. It's just, it's a beginning to a relationship. This is the beginning of something that could be very healthy, mm. you know, and open and honest. And Yes, I love that. I, I, that's my favorite part is those, like I said, those little bitty, you know, uh, confessions up there mm, on the rooftop you know? of their feelings. And it's, it's nice because now they feel comfortable with each other. When you're young and you fall in love, you're going to have your initial flushes of crushes where you aren't honest with that person. There yeah. are things you never could tell them. But then you're going to have like your second or your third love. 
And it's one that's based in realism and honesty. And it's like that person is your best friend, you know, and you're like, holy crap, I've never met anybody that I can be this way with. That's what Bramber reminds me of right now. And it's so beautiful. It is. Because it makes you believe in love and believe that it could last and that you know, it makes you believe in the fairy tales, you know. Um, I've been there. I had my second love, you know. <laughs> my high school sweetheart was my second love and I was able to tell him anything and everything about myself and it was amazing. Is that what you expected me to say, Lance? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Wow. <laughs> okay, kudos. He's like, I know what you people are going to say. <laughs> well done. <laughs> We've touched on most of this. But, um, just to go back a little bit. Next is Karmic Cleansing and his apologies. Um, I mean, okay, first of all, what did you think about the white tank top with the yellow cross taped onto it? <laughs> it was ridiculous. I've always, I have always hated that shirt. And I made a comment about him borrowing a shirt from Bray because they're both, you know. Yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, that's how that happened. Gotcha. Costume <laughs> department failed that day. Oh, I can't stand that shit. Did they go on strike? I don't know. I mean, I, I get the symbolism of it, you know, since that's not Lex's color. You know, he's, he's, bare, he's being bared to the world emotionally and physically. I get it. But it doesn't help that Lex, I mean, that Bray is also wearing a white tank top. Like, come on, you guys. A little more creativity. They happen to find a brand new pack. Yeah. Some Hanes, you know. Right. Fruit of the Loom. Who convinced Lex to put a yellow cross on it? Because Again, symbolism for his spiritual journey. Yeah, but that's not a symbol Tyson would have suggested to him. Yes, but all of this is, a, is an act that Lex is on. Mm -hmm. So why not be overly symbolic in his clothing? Surprised he didn't give himself stigmata. He's so dramatic. So yes, of course he would burn his clothing and sit there in a blanket. And I love the the yellow for isn't it like a color for martyrdom? <laughs> like he's martyring his uh, integrity. Like <laughs> it matches the streak in his hair. <laughs> I know it meant something to somebody. That wasn't an accident. Someone thought that was clever. <laughs> well, it's lost on me. <laughs> To me, I'm just, I'm like pretentious. That's all I see. This is Zack Snyder at his best. <laughs> um, Lex's apologies do lead to two really good scenes. Uh, we have to talk about um, what did everyone make of um, Dal setting a hyster hysterical Jack straight? My favorite lovers, I'm telling you guys. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, Jack is usually the dom in that relationship. And mm -hmm. he didn't know he needed to have a saddle put on him and be nope. put in line. Look at his reaction to Dal uh -huh. taking charge. He liked it. Tell me. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, he did. And I think it was a good scene to show that, you know, it wasn't just like Dal. Because Jack always tries to make it seem like he's the one that, that is relied on the most, you know. But in this relationship, Dal was like, no, I'm here. I'm here to help you. This is what you got to do, you know. And it was nice to see kind of switch of things Dal really is jack's center mm -hmm. like when he strays you know Dal is his gravity you know he keeps jack tethered to something and he's fine with jack floating free and doing what he does but every now and then it's like if jack needs to be brought down you know that's Dal. that's what he does you know and um yep. i love you take a nap basically yeah <laughs> All I kept thinking is, you're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> Give him a Snickers. <laughs> I, I, I really love when Dal gets fed up with Jack. <laughs> yeah. When the balance of their relationship tips. Because it's Jack knows. He always takes it. Because they, they even, like, the uh, makeup department even gave Jack, like, the dark circles under yes. his eyes. Yes. He looks all strung out. He, did. he absolutely needs Dal to set him straight. Good bird. He's like, damn, okay. Okay, baby. Just had to ask nicely. I'm a weak man, Sandra. I married you for six. That was the main reason. Are you saying you don't love me? I don't know. I know I care about you. Why are you doing this? To save my life. What about me? What about my life? You're destroying it. Uh, and the second scene that Lex's comic cleansing leads on to is, of course, his confession to Zandra. 
Um, yeah, panel, what did you make of that scene? And um, doesn't Zanja's comments to Lex highlight the exact problem with Tyson's entire philosophy and way of life? Now, I felt really bad for Zandra in this situation. But at the same time, I feel like she she had a feeling. She had she she had to know somewhere inside of her that he only, you know, got with her because he wanted to have sex. She fully know that like, knew that, but Yeah, I mean I, I felt bad for her though, because I mean the way that he said it to her, the way that he just blatantly was like, This is it, this is I I only did this because I wanted to sleep with you. You know, like it was just it was so brazen and 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 he didn't care at all how it was going to make her feel in that moment. I don't think her issue was as much with the fact that Lex admitted that he only married her to have sex with her. I think it was more the fact that she assumed that if he was married to her, then he wouldn't leave. Yeah, that and, you know, he's probably probably pissy because Tysan's the one who told him to mm -hmm. to do this. Of of course, Tyson told him to do this. You know. You know, that makes it even worse. I feel like it says way less about Tyson's philosophy because any philosophy philosophy can be twisted for ill. Yeah. You know, you mm -hmm. can have the best intentions and then someone takes it on and ruins it and destroys it. So I don't think this is a problem with Tyson's philosophy because in her eyes, she would never confess something with the intention of hurting someone without considering right. their um, feelings. Mm-hmm. Not saying she always succeeds, but mm -hmm. you can't deny that her motives are usually genuine. But this Lex, just like you guys said, Lex does not care what saying this to Zandra is going to do to her. There are many ways he could have said this to her. And this is just the way that he did this. Yeah. He does not care about no. her feelings at all. And what does he say when she says, why are you doing this? He straight up says, I'm trying to save my life. He yep. does not care about anybody else during yeah. his he's going about Tysan's uh spiritual journey the wrong way. He has entirely mm -hmm. selfish motivation. He's not trying to make things right with people. He's trying to clear his conscience. He's just it's a yeah. checklist to him. You know, when he apologizes to Trudy and Trudy says, if you want to make things right, this is what you need to do. And he says, I can't do that, it me it proves he doesn't actually care about making things right with her. And right now, he's not saying this to make things right with Zandra, to have a truth with her. Because you can tell someone something hurtful like this and move forward with them. Yes. He's not interested mm -hmm. in that. No, you know what he I mean? thinks he this is the end all. He does not care about how this is killing her to hear this. And so it's really just a point of why, if you did believe in karma, if you really believed that karma would save Lex, this is the reason it doesn't. I don't think there's anything wrong with the fact that Lex is admitting that I wasn't in love. No, with no. It's the way he goes about it and does not care about the damage he's doing. But it also says something about Zandra that, like you guys pointed out, come on, Zandra, how could you not know this guy just wanted sex? You admitted several times yourself that that's all he wanted and that's what you were afraid of. This just proves how much in love with the illusion of Lex Zandra has been. And he's breaking the illusion. He's breaking the rules of their game. Yep. You no, know, he's being mm -hmm. vulnerable. He's telling her how scared he is. He is not playing the role he's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And Zandra's lost. She never yes. truth from Lex. <laughs> she wanted him to play his part. And when she's getting the truth, she's done. She doesn't want to hear it. She doesn't want to move yep. forward with him. Get out. You know, yeah. the truth isn't what I wanted to hear. I was never here for the truth, Lex. You're he broke the glass is what he did. He, he broke the glass. glass. Yep. You know, and uh, so in a way, they're both to blame because Zandra went into this illusion knowing it was an illusion. Yeah. But she just wanted to believe it. And then she's mad when the illusion is pulled. It's like, duh, you knew what it was. And now exactly. you're Exactly. Exactly. Like, you know, and then, of course, Lex, there were better ways to tell her that you weren't in love with her. Absolutely. And that's all I'm saying. You know, he didn't have to, to do it the way that he did it. He did not care. No, he, he was didn't. Not thinking about how can I tell this without hurting her? It clearly yeah. never crossed his mind that there was a mm -hmm. way to tell her this. Like he could have easily said, look, I just want you to know that when we first got together. Right. I wasn't really there. But my feelings since then have changed or they've yes. grown or blah, blah, blah. Anything. Like, he did not care how she would feel. But then again, maybe that's him not lying to her anymore. 
because maybe you know his feelings haven't changed any and it just is what it is you know it is what it is yeah that sucks but oh yeah you know Mm -hmm. just a really crappy situation yeah so i mean i kind of feel bad for zandra in a way that because it's like man that sucks she Mm -hmm. she put her heart into this person and she allowed herself to believe this delusion about this person and ignore everything that told her the truth i do feel bad for that because she's young you know what i mean and i feel bad for anyone whose optimism is destroyed (laughs) i really do but at the (laughs) same time it's like zandra you knew this about him you knew this going in you just convinced yourself that he'd somehow made some change and you were the magic key and you ignored all evidence to the contrary to that. And so you dug this hole for yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But she also did believe that once they were married, he'd always be there for her. Yeah. But that's her fault. Like she, there was nothing he did to prove that that was. Yeah. Going nothing if in his behavior indicated that that was something. behavior never really changed so much as that she was desperate to look for any mm-hmm. tiny bit of improvement. She's the one who decided for herself that once he marries me, everything will be cake. <laughs> yep. And it's like, honey, you were really ignoring the fact that this, this was squash. It's not cake. Yeah. But who says that? That isn't the world Sandra was brought up in, you know? Oh, again, that's why I do feel bad for her in the sense that clearly this was her illusion of how things work. And I feel sorry that that's destroyed for her in such a cruel way. But at the same time, like, all the red flags were right there in front of your face. Mm -hmm. You just ignored them. You didn't deserve to be hurt so cruelly, but, you know, what did you think was going to happen when you ignored all the signs that you were married and you died? Yeah. But... Yeah, because of that, I can't really blame her for feeling like, okay, well, he's being a fool. Just let him go. Let him leave. I'm not blaming her for that, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) It's just, it definitely comes to roost. Like, we knew this would happen when Mm -hmm. this relationship started. It's sad, but you, like, you knew this is what would happen. Um, So I do feel bad for them, especially for their youth. And uh, it just sucks. But um, mm-hmm. who didn't see this coming? Come on. Who looked at Lex and Zandra and really thought, yeah, this is the love of the ages. <laughs> this is healthy. This is going to work out just fine. <sighs> you had to be 14 to think this was, this had to be hope. Come on. Mm-hmm. Well, well uh, some of us were, old. Liz. Some of us were 14, okay? Hey, and if you believe <laughs> that, no offense to you. You were allowed to think this is going to work out. <laughs> Anybody older, though, would have been like, come on. <laughs> It was always going to crash and burn. <laughs> oh, man. Like, if Lex had been a decent human being to Zandra, regardless of not being in love with her, I'd actually feel sorry for him. You mm-hmm. know? Because yeah. I do know how you can end up in relationships with people where you don't feel as deeply as they do, but you still care about them. Oh, yes. So, oh, yeah, for sure. You'd never hurt them. And now you have to honestly tell them that you're not in love with them. You've been kind of lying about it to spare their feelings and now here you have to say i'm sorry i maybe i'm not capable of being in love i care about you but because lex hasn't been a decent person to Sandra, i don't feel so much for <laughs> fair enough <laughs> it's a really deep honest moment though i'll give him mm-hmm. that like most you know shows aimed at a younger audience wouldn't be this nuanced or bold about it i think that's what actually sets it apart mm from a lot of other shows they were willing to go there you know yeah and once again the show did not editorialize how we should feel about lex's confessions Mm -hmm. or his journey or anyone's reaction to it they just leave it up Mm -hmm. to you to feel how you will like the writing doesn't say lex is in the right and trudy's in the wrong for not forgiving him or whatever it's just kind of like this is it and you feel about it how you will and um, just to wrap up the episode, finally owning up to the hoarding the water and planting it on Bray, Lex banishes himself from the tribe according to their own rules. Um, and Zandra, angered at his faith in Tysan as well as his earlier confession that he only married her for sex, offers absolutely no sympathy. Um, yeah, panel, what did you make of Lex's final departure from the mall? His tribe mates gave him more compassion than he deserved. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it was very telling in how they just allowed him to go. You know what I and mean? I- but they allowed him to go in a very graceful way. Mm-hmm. And that said a lot more about them than it did about him. Oh, true. I didn't come about that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Lex Bray literally wishes this guy the best. Absolutely. I hope mm-hmm. this works. How gracious of a person do you have to be mm-hmm. to wish yeah. someone who has literally done everything to sabotage and your very just system. told you what he'd done, you know, about it's sabotaging him with water. On. Just put he, you through hell. Everyone knew he did well, that. Knew, but it's not the point. The point they is knew, that they but, put you yeah. through this. Yes. And mm-hmm. now they think they're being gracious by telling you that they did it. Bray was way more gracious than Lex deserved. Yeah, Ab- like, I really hope this works for you. But I do like how he said, I don't worry about it. I never liked you or I don't like you. I like that too. That was great. My favorite part <laughs> of the whole freaking episode. Not going to lose any sleep over it. I can't nope. stand it either. <laughs> yep. Because seriously, my reaction to Lex would have been, bye, Felicia. Right. Go. Get out. Right. Whereas this care. is, you know, you know, with Bray, it was cool. Don't like you, but good luck to you. You yeah, know, good luck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe you ought to be in your favor. Mm-hmm. Patsy's all, you can't go. You're sick. I'm like, yes, he can, Patsy. Yes, he can. Let him go, Patsy. But I like how oh. the, little, the little one, you know, of course, she's going to be like, wait a minute. You're our family. You know, because she's still going to look at Lex's yeah, family. Yeah, and that's so sweet. Mm-hmm. Even though this guy's responsible for your brother being gone yep. and probably dead. Yeah. Yep. Whatevs. Go, Lex. Go do whatever <laughs> you have to do. I don't care. <laughs> Oh Lord, that's never been proven. That's the one thing he didn't admit, so he probably didn't that's do it. Never, yeah, it's never been proven. He never told Pat. He should have apologized to Patsy for it then, and he did. Oh, by the so. way, you're an only child because of me. Yeah, I mean, if he wants to make amends and if he did it, like then, but he didn't. So there's our proof. It never happened. Boom. Or maybe that's proof why this method won't. <laughs> why this method won't work? <laughs> because he didn't admit it to Patsy. <laughs> because it's malarkey. He failed. He didn't claim responsibility for Paul. He forgot about it. He forgot about Paul. Just like everyone else. Oh. Oh. That's sad. (laughs) So that brings episode 44 to a close. Thank you very much to the panel. And we'll see you next time for episode 45. So until then, bye. 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 Bye.